Hi everyone. Setting up a seed VM on your local computer is a very straightforward process and the authors provide an excellent guide for the entire procedure. If you come to this seedsecuritylabs.org slash lab setup, you can find this page here. I'm going to link this in the description below. Now I'm going to split the process in three steps. And if you click on this VM manual, uh, you'll see the step by step instructions. Now our step one is to install the VirtualBox software. Now some of you may already have VirtualBox on your computer, but I'm going to assume you're starting from scratch. So we need to download this. Now why? Because the seed VM runs inside VirtualBox. So to download VirtualBox, you can click on this link or better yet, uh, you can search for VirtualBox on Google and then click on downloads. Now the seed author, they recommend a previous build of VirtualBox uh, to ensure compatibility. The newer versions uh, could work fine. I have had good experience with even the VirtualBox 7 version. But uh, just for this tutorial, let's go ahead and install the version they recommend. If you click on that VirtualBox older builds and then 6.1 will be on this page here. Now they recommend 6.1.16. So let's go down. Yes. Now I'm using a Windows computer. So I'm going to click Windows host. If you use a Mac OS or Linux, you can choose the respective versions. Now we have VirtualBox downloaded. And then just simply double click here and then install the software as you would normally do. I already have VirtualBox installed on my computer, so I'm not going to go ahead. But for you, please simply follow the prompts and you install this software. So this should be very simple. All right. Now we are done with step one. Now step two is to download the seed VM zip file, which is seed Ubuntu 20.04 zip. You can download this by coming back to this and you have these three options, uh, so a couple of options, Google Drive and DigitalOcean. I'm going to select Google Drive and download, download anywhere. Now this file is four gigabytes and it can take a few minutes for you to down, finish downloading. I'm going to go back to that page again, to the VM manual. So we will wait for the download to be finished and come back when it's done. All right, now the download has finished. I'm going to go back to my downloads folder and you should see this zip file here. We have to extract the zip file. Click extract all and extract. This is going to take a while. If you have a different uh, software for zip, you can use that as well. All right, now the extraction has finished and if you go inside that folder, you'll see this .vdi file. Okay, so we are done with step one and step two. We got VirtualBox software installed and we also downloaded the seed Ubuntu 20.04 VDI file. The final step is to get this VDI file, get this VM inside VirtualBox. So let's open our VirtualBox software. Now I already have some virtual machines here. You might not have anything. Uh, we are going to create a new VM for our seed VM. Okay. Now you have to put something here. So I'm going to write seed new and machine folder. This is where my VM is going to be stored. Uh, you could choose a different folder if you want, but the default is fine. Next, you have to choose the operating system. So this is a Ubuntu 20.04. So that's Linux and choose Ubuntu 64 bit. Next. So this is how much RAM you want to give to the virtual machine. So the recommended minimum is two gigabyte. So that's 2048 megabyte. I have more RAM available. So I'm going to give it a little bit more. It's up to you. 
uh, if you give it more RAM, it will just make your VM faster. Next, now you have to choose the last option which is use an existing virtual disk file and then click on this icon and add, go to your downloads inside that folder and VDI open. Then select choose, create, done. Now you have this seed new VM right here. We could start the VM right now, but we need to change some settings. So if you click settings, you'll come to this window and then go to advanced. First, we are going to do bidirectional clipboard and drag and drop. This way you will be able to copy paste things from your host machine to your VM. Now click on system. So if you click on system you can choose how much RAM you want to give. So we already chose 8 gigabyte there. But let's go to processor now. And now depending on the number of CPU cores you have available on your computer you can choose one or more CPU. It's recommended to give it at least two. If you have more, you can choose more. So I'm going to give it four CPU and click on these extended features. So this will again improve the performance. If your computer does not support it, that means there could be a hardware limitation and then acceleration could be set to default. Perfect. Okay. Now let's go to display and you have to assign how much video memory you want to give it. So I want, I recommend the maximum. So I'm just going to give it whatever I have. At least give it 20 megabytes, uh, 28 megabyte. Uh, that's what the uh, authors recommend. And again, if you go back to this guide, they show you all these steps right here. Okay. So monitor count is fine. Now very important is selecting the proper graphics controller. The default is already set to VMS VGA. So make sure this is what you have and you can also enable 3D acceleration for better performance. If you do not have this option, it's fine. Okay. Next, we're going to go into network. Now in the network setting, adapter 1, you have to select NAT network and click advanced. Now promiscuous mode. You have to select allow all and finally click on this refresh icon so get a new mac address cable connected everything is okay here and then select okay now your seed vm is ready to be started it's recommended to take a screenshot or a snapshot before you start the vm uh, so if something goes wrong uh, you can come back to this snapshot perfect and then you click start the password for the account is d e e s the opposite of seed again you can find this on that website and we are ready to use the vm now if you have a high resolution display, your VM could look like this, which is not ideal, too small text. So what we can do is go to settings and then appearance or could be somewhere else or oh, displays and select the scale factor to 200% apply. Okay. So now your seed VM uh, is ready to be used. You can run everything that you want. You can go to the terminal, ls, perfect. Now one last thing that I do recommend you to do is create a shared folder. This is very important because often you will share code and lab set of files between your host computer and your guest computer. So let's set that up. So to create a shared folder, and you can click on settings, go to shared folder, add new shared folder, you have to choose a folder path, other, 
and you can choose something on your desktop say for instance on my desktop I have this folder vbox shared I'm gonna select that if you do not have this kind of folder you can also create a new one so let's create a new one so shared VM uh, just like this is fine so a new folder select that and we also want it to be auto mounted so select auto mount that way every time you turn on the VM this will automatically be mounted you do not have to remount it every time so that's good and so this is our shared folder name shared underscore VM we will need that name later on and now click OK then you have to start the VM because we have created that shared folder on our host computer which is Windows now we have to link it from the seed VM okay so we are within the terminal let's uh, change the settings a little bit okay now we have to make sure that we can access that shared folder if you click here see this is the shared folder and this is the, the location could not be displayed now we have to fix that issue if you type in ls these are the folders we have so we have to create a new folder on our vm which we are gonna link to that shared directory so mkdir we are creating a new one and we are creating a folder called shared in our home directory see this is the new folder that we just created now we have to link this folder so this name right now the name should be whatever your guest or host VMs folder name was so for me it was shared underscore VM and then this directory perfect now this should be set up already and we should be able to access that folder now so let's try that if you click here it says the folder is empty so let's verify we can actually share some files uh, so let's go back to our desktop this folder is empty I'm gonna create a new file uh, just to test so test file so we have put this test file within our shared folder on windows and if I go back to that VM you might sometimes need to close and open it if you go to shared we have that test file okay one last uh, heads up if you are trying to bring in the lab set of files do not extract the files within your shared folder because that could lead to some permission issues so what you should see do is after you put the file copy that and take it to your home directory and then you extract the files or do whatever you want but do not extract the files or do not do anything lab related inside that shared directory so that's all now your seed vm is ready to go thank you and please like and subscribe if you found the video helpful